I'm Darren Couchman. Um, I'm age 50 from uh, Little Clapton near Clapton on Sea in Essex. And uh, yeah, I'm going to share my uh, quite a big event that happened in my life. Well, it's happened over a number of years. It's sort of um, that's impacted on on my health, but also my mental health as well. When I was 19, um, I lost both my parents to cancer. They died five weeks apart. Um, my mum had always been ill since I was about age 14. She got diagnosed with breast cancer, fighting it on and off um, until eventually she succumbed from it when she was 56. Uh, well, I can remember a couple of weeks after my mum passing that my dad was crying out in pain. He was in the toilet and he was passing blood. And I obviously said, you know, what's happening here, dad? And uh, we need to get you to the hospital. And obviously we took him to the hospital. They said he's got bladder cancer. And we said, oh, you know, we, we called it early, haven't we? we, we he'll be treated. And, I said, no, it's, it's spread all over. He's, he's kept it quiet for possibly a year because he didn't want to upset my mum and obviously I, I have us have the worry of him having cancer as well. So literally, yeah, five weeks after my mum died, he literally went downhill and passed away as well. So very, very difficult time. I think for me, I bottled up my grief. I didn't grieve for my mum and dad properly. It started coming out after I was diagnosed with testicular cancer at age 27. Yeah, so I remember finding a lump in the bath, saying to the wife, oh, I think I've got a lump here. Um, you know, have a feel, which she said, no, we're married. We don't do that sort of thing anymore. <laughs> so, um, but yes, yeah, so I went to the doctors. Uh, I, have to, I have to admit, though, I had to really push the doctor. I was fobbed off for quite a while. Um, but them saying there's nothing wrong with it, it's a cyst, don't worry about it. Uh, until eventually I went for a second opinion and the doctor said, right, we'll refer you because obviously you're worried about it. And then as soon as I saw a urologist, he felt the lump and said, yeah, that's definitely a, definitely a tumour. Um, so as you can imagine, it was a huge shock because I'd seen what cancer had done to my mum and dad. Uh, they never saw me got married. They never saw my kids. So they lost out on a lot of stuff. And as soon as I got told I had cancer, that immediate thoughts were, same's going to happen to me. I'm going to die. I'm not going to see my kids grow up. Not, who's going to take my daughter to her first prom? Not going to be me. Who's going to take my son to his first Tottenham game? Won't be me, because I'm not going to be around. But thankfully, it was a slow-growing tumour, so it hadn't spread anywhere else in my body, thankfully. So, yeah, managed to, you know, kick it in the bollocks, shall we say, and uh, move on with my life. And uh, I became a financial advisor for the job that I was in at the time. I was working for a building society. And uh, part of my role as being a financial advisor was talking about life cover, critical illness cover. Um, and having to paint pictures. So when you're a salesperson, you have to sort of paint a picture of like, oh, you know, if you got diagnosed with cancer uh, and you passed away, what would happen to your family? What would happen to the bill? That really affected me to the point where I was waking up in the morning crying in the mirror, not wanting to do that job because I didn't want to have to paint pictures that I'd been through personally. I started self-harming um, and uh, I became quite psychotic at times as well. Like the wife, I don't really remember doing it, but the wife would say that she'd come down in the morning and I would have moved all the furniture around and piled it in, in different places. And she said, why have you done that? And I would say, um, I have to do it because if I don't do it, something's gonna happen to our kids. So then what happened was I was diagnosed with obsessive compulsive disorder. Um, and I remember that all stemming from when my mum was really ill and, I, and she was taken into the hospice that um, I would say things like, um, if, I don't, if I don't say my mum's going to be fine 20 times, then something's going to happen to her. So I'd say it, I'd say it. And then one day I thought, what am I doing? I'm being stupid. I'm not. So in the end, I didn't, start, I, didn't start, I didn't continue saying phrases like that. What happens? My mum passes away. So my brain automatically thought, that's my fault. If I'd have said... My mum's going to be fine, my mum's going to be fine so many times. She would have been fine, but because I stopped doing it, that really buggered up my brain. So um, I became obsessed with a certain number, number five, which was weird. I don't know why, got no relevance to me in life at all, but my brain just told me at the time that number five was very important to me. Uh, and I used to carve the number five into my clop arm. And it got to the point where it got so, so bad. I had a lot of time off work, which who were great. They were very understanding with, with my mental health. Um, but I think it was a combination of the job that I was doing, but also I hadn't grieved properly for my mum and dad as well. And it all just came out. And one day at work, I literally just exploded. I remember a colleague saying, you know, something's not right with you, you've not been right for the last few weeks, you're not your normal self. 
uh, is everything I can. I remember just breaking down, falling to the floor in a flood of tears. And uh, I remember them ta then take me to the doctors who then, you know, said, yeah, you've, you, you definitely need help. And basically it transpires after some phone calls and tuna fro, I ended up in the Priory in Chelmsford for four weeks. I think what I learned from that was that I should have spoken earlier rather than bottling my feelings up. I should have, um, yeah, I should have just talked to someone and said, look, this is how I'm feeling rather than just thinking, no, I can carry on. You know, I can, I can still go into work each day. Even though I hated it. I absolutely detested work. I can remember, like, I think, I felt, I think the self-harming was a cry for help to say to people, you know, look, I need, I need some help here. Cause you know, if you break your leg, people can see it and I go, oh, you broke your leg, you know, you know do all right. And now if I get stressed or I feel something's boiling up, I recognize it and I can do something about it now rather than just not talk to anyone. Um, so that's my, my biggest bit of advice to anyone that I speak to. Don't, don't bottle it up, talk, talk to people. You know, even if you confide in one person, just talking about it really is a massive help. It just feels like the whole world's off your shoulders. So yeah, that's, that's maybe a stronger person now. I mean, the work that I do now when I raise awareness of testing the cancer, I use a lot of humor, um, but also I, I do share my story a lot as well because you know, anyone that gets diagnosed with cancer, um, yes, you've got the physical side to contend with, but you've also got the mental side of it as well. You know, not just the fact that, you know, oh my God, I've got cancer, am I gonna be all right? But particularly with testicular cancer, it's that because you're losing a testicle, it's that masculinity thing where, oh my God, I'm not a, I'm not a complete man anymore. What the hell? You know, I'm gonna lose a testicle here. But, you know, it's, it's getting over that. I used a lot of humor to get me through that. I lot, used a lot of humor with my mates to get me through the testicular cancer journey. Um, because they were treading on eggshells around me. When I told them I, I had testicular cancer, they didn't know what to say. Uh, but one of my mates cracked a joke and called me Uncle Bulgaria, which is like a womble. Yeah, womble, womble. Yeah, so, um, and we laughed and I thought, you know what? The old saying, laughter is the best medicine, does, did work there.